Hello all. Sometimes uh, we face an issue where we see the performance of an API is not that good. Maybe it is uh, very slow or below the SLA, uh, which we have to meet. And you see a lot of complaints uh, coming from clients or the uh, consuming, consuming APIs that the response is very slow, right? So, and then you think, okay, I did a lot of uh, hard work and did uh, do the coding in a such a way that I follow all the standards. Even I try to optimize my code as well. So why is this happening, right? So uh, how do we how do we analyze that part and fix our APIs? So uh, first step is to uh, get logs uh, from the log server, analyze them, and see if there's a bottleneck, right? So if you uh, if you find the bottlenecks, maybe uh, you are creating some memory objects which are not being clear, like a lot of uh, GC calls are happening. All those uh, coding issues you can solve. But there are, there are few ways by which uh, we can also uh, optimize or uh, increase the performance of API. Let us see uh, each of those ways by which we can achieve a very good API response. So first step, uh, first way uh, is to use caching. As we know that uh, calling database and reading data from it is a very costly affair, right? Because a lot of internal calls happen and that is a very costly affair. So, so what we can do instead of uh, every time going to DB to read uh, for data which is more frequently fetched by client, what we can do, uh, we can use, uh, you can be, we can use the cache, right? Maybe you can use Redis cache or mem, mem cache, right? But what happens in, when you use caching, you uh, write uh, data into cache where you can read it frequently rather than going to the database every time. So it increases the performance or response uh, in a very, very huge number, right? You get a very good response when you use caching, right? So you can consider caching uh, as well in your application. Second step uh, is like uh, to focus on uh, connection pooling, right? So whenever uh, we uh, connect to database, they are connection pools because those, those connections are being opened uh, with database, then uh, we can uh, uh, fetch data from the database, right? So suppose you have multiple clients and every time you are opening connections and closing connections because uh, connection calls take a lot of uh, effort. I mean, a lot of uh, steps, right? In, in internally, right? So, like uh, securing data or maybe uh, calling DB internal. So uh, that's why uh, what we can do: we can optimize the connection pool rather than uh, closing the connection uh, every time and opening a new connection uh, when uh, there's a hit from client. What we can do: we can reuse the connection. So, what you can do that you can optimize your server settings in a way. Uh, that you are basically uh, utilizing the uh, connection pool uh, in a manner that you don't close and open every time, you just reuse them, right? So by this, there is an extra overhead you can avoid and get very fast response from database. So this is also a very good way uh, by which you can improve the performance on a, of an API. Third uh, way is uh, to solve the n-person query problem. So what is this a uh, problem? Basically, what happens that, for example, if you are if you, if a client is calling a books API, right? So and if you see here, right, in response, uh, so client has just sent and uh, the collections of books only with the ID and the ISBN number, right? So what happens that first time client will run a query that will give him the collections of all these books, but now if they want to show into their website, so what will happen? They have. They also need the book name, author name, publish date, right? All those things they need. So what will happen? So one query they will run uh, for to get this collection of books, and n queries they will need need to run to get data for n books, right? So there will be n plus one query happening, and we know that uh, querying database is very costly. So what we can do instead of writing very small or simple queries, to be more modular. We can write a response in such a way that maybe query is a bit complex. It's only a one or twice, uh, two times affair. And so that instead of n person queries running in your system, you can uh, complete the whole response in just uh, two queries or one query, right? So that is uh, a very good way. Uh, so you should think that, okay, 
uh, what are needs of uh, customers or client and what response they expect. So rather than uh, them calling each time uh, to get resource, uh, they you can send them whole resource in one shot, right? So that's also a good way to increase response of the APIs. Next is uh, pagination, right? Sometimes uh, we see that uh, responses are very huge, right? So uh, when responses are very huge, then what happens is that uh, you have to, uh, I mean, they might take a lot of time on network. So there will be network uh, hop uh, that will be like uh, costly to the AV performance. So what you can do, instead of sending the whole response in, in one shot, right? So what you can do, uh, you can send them in chunks, right? Like page wise, like page one, page two, page three. So what happens is that uh, response is being sent to client in, in a, in a chunk manner, right? Not like a full response. So it also, uh, because if you are just setting whole response in one shot, so that uh, that uh, increases the weight of the client. But when you are sending a response in like in like a pagination type, right? What happens is that uh, client gets some response back uh, in a very short time. So this also help uh, to improve the performance of an API. Next uh, a step is to compress the uh, compress the request response. Suppose your request is very large, right? Suppose it's a huge, huge, uh, uh, huge request, right? Or huge response coming. So if you send the response and uh, request in a raw form, so that is going to, uh, to take a time, uh, longer time, right? On network also to process. But if you can compress it, so that what happens that uh, it is like uh, it is a bit faster, and it helps us to improve the performance of our API. Then our uh, next step is to use the thing called logging. So logging uh, looks very simple, right? Uh, you want uh, to have a lot of logs into your application and because so that you can debug if any issue comes, right? So what we do, uh, we write the log at very uh, high level and we, we want all logs, right? Error, warn, debug, everything. But you should always uh, choose a very uh, a very appropriate logging level, right? And also, uh, you can also consider a synchronous logging because when you write a synchronous log, so at that time, uh, if you're writing a huge log, right? So what happens is that it will take a hit on the performance of API because uh, there will be some time spent on writing the logs on the uh, disk, right? Uh, so that what we can do, we can write the logs asynchronously. So rather than writing them uh, at, at the same time, uh, what we can do, uh, we can put logs in some buffer and write them onto disk, like when we have more time or like we can uh, do it more, uh, I mean, uh, less frequently, right? So that's uh, that's a way uh, to increase performance because uh, logs maybe uh, look simple, but sometimes uh, if you are writing a lot of logs, so that also eats up into the response time of the API. So it's also a very good way uh, to increase performance of the API. So uh, and this one is a load balancer, right? Because suppose uh, if you have a very uh, big application and uh, you are running in the multiple instances, so and maybe by default, uh, if the uh, if request is going to one server, right? So that may be overloaded. So it is better to use load balancer. So load balancer is uh, going to distribute the uh, traffic into all the instances of application or API in a manner that all uh, all servers are equally loaded, right? So that, I mean, you can use any uh, any kind of uh, the algorithm so that uh, distribute the traffic uh, uniformly. So these are various ways uh, by which uh, we can increase the performance of an API. And yeah, thank you very much uh, for watching. Uh, see you next time. Uh, please leave comments or questions. Uh, please subscribe. Thank you.